example, this is what my loft looks like and it needs some work. It's all a bit of a mess up here and this may be familiar to you. That's our old cold water storage tank and you can see the insulation is a bit all over the place. I'm draining off the last bit of the tank so you can see there's just a tiny bit in there but we want to cut this up and get this out of our way. I went and got 200 mil of loft roll to top up what we've already got up there. I got not the usual stuff you get from B&Q and the, those kind of home stores but I got the bigger rolls that you get from the builders merchants um, which in hindsight made it a bit more difficult getting them through the hatch and everything like that but uh, it gives you uh, more for your square meterage anyway. That's on top of the bathroom, the extractor fan there. And this is on top of our bedroom. All the way up through the gable. And I wonder where this one got rolled up from. This is where the cold water storage tank was, up on that platform. So making good storage space for that, but we'll have to rework some of that. You can see how far back. I mean, there is a lot of uh, a lot of breathing room there. Now you need to leave a gap for ventilation, but some of these gaps look excessive, and then some of them look non-existent. So. I need to get in there on my hands and knees and do some evaluation and some of the insulation is not even between the joists at all as you can see sitting really high there before we put any insulation in we're gonna have to correct the original insulation that doesn't even come up to those joists there it does in one tiny point and then you can see it's not tucked down in the in the um, lanes it's not coming right up to the edge and this front gable has zero insulation running across the top as well so I'm going to try and cut a piece of the thinner stuff and try and get that in there too okay so we've done some insulation correction removed all those gaps shuffled it all along may have to stuff a bit more insulation in the other end but started up this end and to fill that little gap there this doesn't need to be breathable there are the soffits at the end that obviously I can't block but that place there should be insulated so I've taken 150 mil um, <coughs> a bit of excess that we had and that has gone against there for now Obviously I'm missing a bit there. I'm a little bit short, but that's to come in a minute. The rest of this, this is all above our bedroom. This is the extra 200 millimeters on top of the 150 millimeters. So that's a total of 350 mil. Probably fluff it up a little bit, but let the air get to it and let it expand. And all the way down over our ensuite and the kids' bathroom. So we've just, uh, finished one I guess it's over one third of the roof but next we've got to do over the boys bedrooms and then figure out what's going on with the middle of the roof that's what it looks like with the completed top up on that side and we were left with just one roll and so luckily it calculations worked this is addressing a little bit of the draft around the hatch so I used some expanding foam and tape which is brilliant stuff just to try and uh, stop some of those drafts coming through and you can see where it's starting to expand there. Great stuff. I then went to get some PIR, 100 mil PIR boards, cut them in half, filled the car up as much as I could get in there for our next little bit of the project. Here I'm using a little bit of steel C channel that I have left over from work that uh, I'm just screwing in between the trusses there and you'll see why. Um, oh, I use a 
get the level in shot so you know I'm doing it properly. There you go. You can see I've made some shelves with an OSB on there. Even got the kids involved, got them cutting up some batten to help because I ran out of the C channel. So you can see we're just trying to clear stuff off the floor, trying to make some space so we can lift those boards and get the PIR under on the center section. Well, the shelves are in. Just a bit of OSB in the via the trusses and some we got some C channel uh, section over that side that I had left over and on this side it's just 50 mil by 25 mil battens that we had left over as well so that's it we've got all the storage up off the floor ready for lifting this floor and adding some extra insulation and um, Hopefully this will help us see what's up here and declutter as well because no doubt half of this could just go in the bin. Now we've lifted the floorboards here at the um, center part of the loft and you can see where they've used a 50 mil by 25 mil batten so just to raise it high enough because those these uh, joists here are 100 mil you know 4b2 typical joists and to get the 120 mil insulation in they've used 25 by 50 battens and then chipboard tongue groove flooring over the top We've lifted this end one and I think what the plan is going to be is put the 100mm PIR over the top of this 120mm um, fiberglass insulation loft roll which should bring the U value well above current building regs and then we'll lay the chipboard floor back on top of a continuous layer of 100mm PIR the whole way across here. That's the plan anyway. Well, you probably noticed in the last little clip that there was no insulation here, which, uh, you know, I know that's against the block work and below that, um, that's kind of outside of the thermal envelope because the, the we've got dot and dab on this. And so by the time the plaster's built up and stuff, this is really, really probably the uh, corner that they're fixing the plasterboard to underneath onto this joist and so the insulation the other side of the joist probably isn't that important but anything we can do to try and prevent any thermal breaks any um thermal bridging i figured why not i had just ripped up a few little uh bits of uh insulation to just make sure we're stuffed and continuous down there so let's get the pir on that's 100 mil of PIR and we've gone for a it's a full 2.4 meter length that fits between there and uh, you can see it's exactly the same length as the uh, uh, chipboards tongue and groove chipboards which is also 2.4 by 600 mil wide so we should be able to just go straight on top with all of the chipboard and I'll just have to sort out some screws that are 100 mil longer than the 50 or so mil long screws that were used in it previously so I think that's going to work in theory just a few shots that are showing you all of the PIR laid down uh, use some low expansion foam between these to cre create a continuous layer of insulation he was very happy with the work we'd done and uh, here you can just see uh, the last little step that we've got to try and tackle okay well that's it all the 100 mil PIR boards, well not all of them, but for that section, you can see that's raised by 100 mil now compared to the existing level that's a bit lower. Laid all of the chipboard back on. Luckily, I had some 150 mil. Oh, where have they gone? Oh, it looks like the only one I've got left is the one I use for plugging the corking gun. So, luckily, we went from those screws up to those big ones to go drive all the way through the PIR and into the existing battens which is holding the floor down nicely so now you can see around the edges let me see where's a good you can possibly see 
that we're now raised up maybe you can see that maybe you can't maybe you can't see the height level so you can see there we got the 350 mil and then that jumps down to the 150 mil in the center there and then back up here we've got another we've got 120 of normal loft roll and then 100 mil of the pir with a chipboard over it so i need to luckily i've still got one more roll of that's 200 200 mil that is so i'll rip off some sections and then just fill in these little gaps here and um, then we are pretty comprehensively covered i think just got one more just the last bit to contend with now i need to raise the shower pump but i don't like the way that it's plumbed in anyway for me it's got all of these right angle restrictions on it all unnecessary so i'm going to rotate this 180 degrees so the outlet of the mixer goes straight into the diverter valve so there's no restrictor there and then as you can see this comes and then takes a right angle but it's on a bit of 15 mil plastic um, and this one's all in 15 mil copper but again we've got right angle right angle right angle and down the other end there's two more right angles as well so i want to get away from all those elbows those 90 degree elbows and um, probably i'll probably just run a straight shot underneath that joist um, i guess 22 mil um, from the 22 mils that come up into the loft all the way over and then just reduce them down to 15 mil as they then go into the, the mixer as they go into this smart valve first of all um but anyway what that basically means is this i'm going to take all of this off anyway and lift this board up i've still got plenty of the 100 mil pir it's just stashed all over the place so i've got plenty enough that i can cut up around for this section get a good piece down here um, and then probably I'm probably going to lift that plywood board off and the joists that are running perpendicular that are running that uh, direction I'm probably going to take them out and probably drop the plywood back down onto the lower joists should just give me a bit more head clearance over there and give me a bit of walking room and then properly insulate underneath because it's all a bit hit miss or maybe and that's i don't know one of the reasons i want to lift the board off anyway the rest of that 200 mil roll is to just fully blanket all of that space i may also have still a load of pir but i've got a project in the garage that i can use a bit of that for so i'll check back in when we're completely finished and see how we uh see how we go we may even um we may even get a little bit better flow on the shower with uh, all of those elbows that may be causing a little bit of restriction um, along with the plastic push fit everywhere um, i know that a copper pipe has better capacity and better flow rate than the equivalent uh, 50 mil plastic pipe so we'll see if that actually makes any difference to the shower performance as well as kind of a side benefit anyway that's it for today Okay, we're back again. I can't really remember where I got to in the last video. This has been a as and when project, uh, an hour here, an hour there. So, <coughs> got the floor down. I'm sure I showed that in the last video. So, we're up on 100 mil PIR in the middle section now. Um, but I need to sort out this little mess because this is where the old uh, cold water storage tank was. And I need to... Um, do a few things so this pipe is in my way I want to get that board up I want to get these uh, cross uh, joists out because um, they're we don't need that for that kind of weight anymore perhaps in the future there might be some home storage batteries up here um, but they'll be fine just on those lower ones or probably wall mounted anyway um, stop rambling I need to remind myself of that but I've removed all the lagging to show you a better idea of what I'm working with so you can see I've got hot coming in here which goes round on that plastic 15 mil pipe um, it's only got one elbow before the inlet and if I follow that round to the other end you can see it just comes off there so that's a 22 mil 
elbow and then a 22 mil to 15 mil reducer but i know what the plastic pipes like especially with the inserts this is the cold water feed that comes up again 22 mil you see it reducing down to 15 mil and then we've got one soldered elbow we've got another soldered elbow that's two then we've got push fit three push fit four but what I think, to be honest, I was looking at the flow rate uh, tables, calculating the length. That top piece there is only about two meters. So, you know, we haven't got a huge amount of, um, huge amount of flow. And looking at how much um, flow can be lost on these elbows, I think the elbows are what's probably killing the system. The, the shower pressure is okay. It's not as good as it was when it was pumped before we had to change over to the um, high pressure box because of the uh, heat pump. The crossover in pipes is also not great, not pretty. Whoever did the original um, shower installation, the bathroom fitters obviously were not that meticulous. So what my plan is, and you'll tell me if I'm stupid, I think the biggest restriction is actually these two elbows here. And if I turn that whole 180 degrees so that the outlet of the processor it, and the mixer whatever this smart valve is going directly straight into this um, isolation valve and straight into the diverter and i don't have these two elbows to worry about um, on the mixed pipe because i've got two 15 mils coming in here a hot and a cold i don't think that's a massive restrictor but what i am going to do is um, i've got myself uh a couple of I went down the merchant to get myself some three meter of copper pipe so that I don't need any couplings any joints I can just cut back over there and run the 13 mil straight under there brought my box of um, uh, brackets up so that we can mount that so it's not all over the show because this plastic one for example it doesn't have a single that's the only mount right there um, and obviously after the elbow but underneath here it's just rattling around which is less than ideal um, also not the end of the world and of course that's the hot water in that plastic one if we go to copper we're going to get a lot more flow through it anyway because of the uh, big increase in diameter not only the pipe but then as soon as you put those pipe inserts in the end restricts it right down anyway i'm just going to get on with it and i'll show you the finished job i thought this was going to be a quick video about loft insulation but it turns out that we've got to do a few other things along the way and um, i guess that's the reality of these kind of jobs it's half insulation half carpentry half plumbing um, to try and uh, to try and get it all sorted but we are getting there and then I need to cut up this last roll just fill in those little bits you can see where the 350 mil steps down to 150 ish and then we're we're stepping back up but I'm sure I'm just repeating and covering ground in my last little clip I took okay no more waffling get on with the work right that's it so I've twisted it down around 180 degrees just made up a couple of elbows there not ideal to have the elbows but i don't have any pipe bending tools and so um and because this is on 215 mil copper feed in i don't think that's going to be the flow restrictor so once it mixes in the smart valve there we've got a straight line through these are now continuous runs i still need to raise this board up so um you can see at the moment i'm clipped underneath there um, but it doesn't quite meet all the clips because the pipes aren't straight I'll show you over the other end So I cut this 22 mil to the right height and that's a reducing elbow and then that sits straight in The clips on the bottom of those joists at the moment um, Unfortunately the hot water feed was a lot shorter um, I was going to extend it up, but I think that's actually going to work just fine as well. So I will have to uh, just tweak the other end as I raise the floor but uh, we've got two straight shots of copper I thought something else I'll quickly show you as a little demonstration just for the naked eye um, as professionals will be aware but home DIYers you may or may not be aware um, let me just get these level here we go pipe diameters so you can see the copper pipe on my left and then the plastic pipe which does have a smaller diameter if I get the camera in the right place 
Oh, this is tricky to do. You can see there's a slightly l smaller diameter, but that itself is not normally a major issue for most applications. Of course, for a shower, you want really good pressure. For the rest of the home, uh, the plastic's probably fine unless you want great radio flow. But the killer is this one here. Let's see if we can hold those together. So once you have to get those inserts in, look at how much that restricts it down. I haven't got a vernier on me or a micrometer to tell you what that in, inner diameter is, but I'm sure you can look that up online. You can see that's 15 mil plastic with the inserts in the end. And sure, it's not a restrictor over the whole length of the pipe, so it's not a massive game changer, but that will cause significant restriction. And that's what I had uh, as a hot water feed coming into this smart valve. It had those pipe uh, inserts on both ends. You can see the old pipe work there that I've cut out. The copper was the cold, so that was uh, part of it. It also had those other elbows on the end after all of those copper soldered elbows. I had the plastic push fit ones, and then I had that hot water that at least it was straight, but it was plastic with the reducers on the end. And then I, can't, I counted the elbows before, but you can see now I've got two elbows on each and um, hopefully that's going to improve the shower performance and it's also neatened it up a little bit i'll put a little cable tie over the data cable and i need to find where my other pack of cable ties is so i can just maybe do something there with that bit of flex for the fuse spur but anyway next job is just pull the couple of screws out of this chipboard lift it up get the 100 mil pir under there and now that the pipes aren't connected on the top of this board i can start taking this board out clearing this way now to get the rest of the insulation finished just whacked on a bit of lagging could do with a couple of cable ties because i'm just kind of reusing all of the lagging that i previously had um, but it's a decent wall thickness at least on the long runs where most of the heat loss could be um, and uh, lifted up the board and uh, kicked one of these out of the way uh, the other one i need to get the lever bar in there and get that off just drop the light switch down so that's um, not up on that beam so I can now pull it out and um, started uh, moving some of the insulation which we have massive gaps under here so just been filling the gaps up and then this is the 250 mil that's going to go over the top of the rest of that did I say 250 I meant 200 I don't know what I'm talking about so it was originally 150 under there although some of it's been quite compressed down and is even below the old uh, joist there so um, anyway it'll bring it up to 300 or so and then uh, we're going to board back across here and that board obviously won't cover the whole load so I'm going to get some bigger board so that we can uh, just make sure we've got a continuous floor all the way between the rafters right we're going to call that good for now and we are now stuffed all the way up so there's no gaps it's continuous all the way on both sides we brought everything up nice and level around there readjusted the ladders to work moved the light switch over drop that board down uh, later on I'll get another board for that space but at the moment we just got leftover building materials from various projects that I need to sort out but that's fully stuffed under there as well you can see front and back left and right just um, that board is just placed there at the moment just uh, yeah had a spare board but not screwed in or anything but I think that's gonna um, we're gonna call that good and uh, that's a well insulated loft and uh, a lot more organized and tidy although we could still do with uh, maybe thinning out what we've got up here I think is the uh, diplomatic way to put it